In this tutorial we'll define the concept of joint probability function. Joint probability function is defined as follows. For each value of x and y, f of x and y is greater or equal to zero. And then the double integral of this probability of this joint probability density function, first with respect to x and then with respect to y, must equal to one. Okay, so this is very similar to the univariate case where we had f of x had to be greater than uh, or equal to zero, or, and the fact that when we take the integral from minus infinity to positive infinity of the uh, univariate uh, PDF denoted by small f of x, with respect to x, we had to arrive at 1 as well. So you, uh, we can draw a parallel between the uh, bivariate and the univariate case. Now don't worry, I will explain these two properties uh, in a second visually on a graph. But before, let's think of a situation where we would be interested in knowing the joint distribution of two random variables. So let's say that um, time to the next fatal shark attack is one variable, let's denote it as uh, x, and time to the next uh, croc attack in Australia is denoted as y. So we've got two um, random variables here, which are the time to the next fatal attack by one, one of these uh, animals. Okay, and we are interested in their joint distribution, in their joint arrival times. We want to know how these two variables behave jointly. Uh, please bear in mind that x is just a, a random variable of time. Yeah, so we are we are trying to model the arrival, i.e., time to the next um, fatal incident. I know that this scenario is a bit gloomy, but I think it will illustrate the concept of joint. Uh, probability f um, density f function. Okay, so uh, what I've done here, I use this website livephysics.com and I graphed uh, the probability density function that we are given to model the joint distribution of these uh, uh, two uh, arrival times, okay? And um, as you can see, we could actually, before we proceed analyzing this further, we could actually verify whether uh, this PDF that is given here uh, is valid, okay? And it will be valid if this condition is met and if this condition is met. As for this condition, you can just eyeball um, and you will see that there isn't any anywhere in the whole graph a region where uh, f of x and y will be below zero, you know, because here we've got zero, so anything above above uh, in this direction is positive, right? So this is kind of like like our z variable here, z variable, and uh, or z, but we should call it f of x and y. Okay, so nowhere in the region that we we actually see it is this condition violated, and for that reason, oh, I just gave it gave a check. Um, purely by eyeballing the graph. How about this one? Well, this one will involve um, a bit more work because we have to basically solve the um, double integral. What this condition is saying is that area, the area under under the curve, or under the surface here in this instance, should be equal to one. So when we integrate from here down, okay, this whole area, this has to equal to 1. Okay, there's just one more thing before we uh, attack this double integral. Um, x and y are defined for all values greater than or equal to 0, and this can be seen from the graph. So, um, even though, strictly speaking, it uh, we are told that we have to use this formula for minus infinity, uh, we'll, we'll use the 0 as the, as the lower range of integration because this is uh, how the PDF is defined, okay? So let's write double integral of uh, from zero to infinity. Okay, now PDF function here was given as um, exponential to the power of minus x plus y, and then dx dy. Please note that this expression here, i.e. e to the power of minus x plus y, can be written in the following way. 
e to the power of minus x times e to the power of minus y. Okay, so uh, we first of all integrate with respect to x, so we can move this e to minus y in front of the second integral. So I will just show it here right now. So we have the first integral and then e to minus y, then we've got the second integral e to minus x and then dx and then dy. Okay. Now, let's have a look at this integral in the middle. Well, this is essentially the same as minus e to x from 0 to infinity, integrated from lower range of integration and the upper range of integration, limit of integration. Yeah. So this actually turns out to be uh, minus e to minus x as x tends to infinity. Well, this means that m this the power will be t tending to minus infinity. So uh, the whole expression will evaluate to zero. Okay. So that's this limit of integration done. And now, when x is zero, minus e to zero is actually one. So minus minus one. So this equals one. Therefore, we've got e minus y times 1 dy. But we have already solved a similar um, case here, it's just that the variable is different. So we know that this uh, this will also be 1. So e to the power of minus y, uh, y from uh, integrated from, from uh, 0 to infinity will be also 1. Therefore, the, the whole expression evaluates to 1. And we've got our second property proven, this one here, and therefore for that reason we are dealing with a valid uh, joint probability density function. In the next video we'll continue this example and I will show plenty more uh, tips and properties of these uh, joint PDFs, especially when we assume that the two random variables are independent.